Armando Hasurungan, Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos, please visit Facebook Armando Hasurungan. In this video, we're going to talk about the mode of action of antibiotics. So we're not going to look into extreme detail, but we'll just look at the overview in a way. So mode of action of antibiotics. Now we have to know that antibiotics either destroy or slow down the growth of bacteria. So therefore, if it destroys a bacteria, it is bactericidal. If it slows down the growth of bacteria, it's bacteriostatic. Here I am drawing a typical bacteria with cell membrane and cell wall. The wall, the cell wall and cell membrane structure I am drawing is characteristic of a gram-positive bacteria but we will just assume it is any type of bacteria. Within the cytoplasm, within the bacteria, we have a circular DNA. We can have RNA being synthesized and ribosomes here. Ribosomes will synthesize proteins. The first type of antibiotic are the ones uh, that I want to talk about are the ones that target the cell membrane. These antibiotics will disrupt the cell membrane function, which means that they disrupt the phospholipid bilayer. So here is the cell membrane, and here is the cell wall, known as a peptidoglycan. They are different. The antibiotic binds here to the cell membrane. It will alter the cell membrane structure and will make it more permeable. This will just disrupt the osmotic balance, causing leakage of cellular molecules. And essentially, it will increase the water uptake, leading to cell death. Examples of these drugs are polymyxins, which I spelt wrong, and polyenes. Now, polyenes are actually specifically used against fungal pathogens. But that's just a note to know, that you can use... Uh, polyenes that target cell, me cell membranes in, in fungus. So polymyxins and polyenes target cell membranes. Other antibiotic classes target the cell wall. These antibiotics will inhibit cell wall synthesis, so these drugs are therefore bactericidal. They will cause bacterial bacteria to die. Example of these drugs are penicillin, cephalosporin, and bacitracin. I hope I pronounced that right. All these drugs have different mechanisms of action when it comes to uh, inhibiting the cell wall to synthesis. A good thing about these drugs is that it won't affect human cells because human cells do not have peptidoglycans. We do not have cell walls. Penicillin and cephalosporin are beta-lactams. And then you have the bacitracin and other glycopeptides that prevent the synthesis of cell walls as well. Antibiotics that disrupt the cell wall is pretty extensive, and so hopefully I will make a video on that. Cell walls are important to bacteria. Disrupting the cell wall or preventing in cell wall synthesis will result in cell death. The next type of um, antibiotic class is the ones that can inhibit here DNA synthesis or what's occurring here, RNA synthesis. So these antibiotics will inhibit RNA or and DNA synthesis. So here the bacteria are typically uh, uh, having DNA replicated, of course like so. So we have antibiotics that prevent from DNA from being synthesizing, for being synthesized. These are quinolines and also a class known as nalidixic acids. And then, of course, RNA can be made when the D from the DNA. And there are drugs such as rifamycin, which prevents RNA synthesis and therefore protein synthesis. Other classes of antibiotics also inhibit protein synthesis itself. Protein synthesis is carried out typically by ribosomes, which translate mRNA 
into proteins. Bacteria need to make proteins in order to survive. However, there are antibiotics that target either the 30S subunit or the 50S subunit of the ribosomes. Erythromycin and uh, chlorophenicol target the 50S subunit of ribosomes, whereas there are tetracycline, streptomycin, and gentamicin that target the 30S subunit. Either way, this will disrupt uh, the ribosomes from making proteins, which will result in uh, the bacteria obviously unable to make proteins, so the bacteria is pretty much useless. Thus, the bacteria can still be alive, but it just is unable to make anything. And so, these antibiotics that target protein synthesis are bacteriostatic. They prevent bacterial growth. The last type of antibiotic are the ones that inhibit folic acid metabolism. So normally, normally, this green thing here, uh, called PABA, which stands for para-aminobenzoic acid, it's a precursor to folate. So the bacteria can, can metabolize PABA, PABA, into folate. There are antibiotics out there that inhibit folate, or folic acid metabolism. See, PABA normally can be metabolized to folic acid within the bacteria. And folic acid, or folate, is essential for the synthesis of adenine and thymine, two of the four nucleic acids that make up DNA. These antibiotics, such as sulfono sulfonoamides and trimethoprim, prevent conversion of PABA to folate and therefore prevent uh, proper DNA uh, synthesis, you can say. Humans do not synthesize folic acid and so these bac antibiotics are okay to take for humans and are selective towards bacteria. I hope you enjoyed this short video on antibiotics. Thank you for watching.